Welcome to the final video of the template tutorial series. In this video, I will talk about a few general template building tips, answer some of the questions that I've received, and discuss computer hardware specs necessary for a multi-computer setup. I will also briefly talk about some more advanced MIDI capabilities of Lemur, and look at a couple of commercially available products that utilize these functions. And lastly, I will cover a few other apps that are alternatives to Lemur work with tablets or touchscreens, and can significantly improve your workflow with Cubase and large templates. First, a few more general tips and tricks for template building. When making expression maps for a sample library, what I like to do is to create a master expression map containing all of the articulations available for the entire library. Then I make copies of this master map, and adjust those copies depending on which articulations are available for each individual instrument. This is a lot quicker than starting new expression maps from scratch for each instrument. I suggest that when building templates, you should start small and then expand. It can be a really daunting and time-consuming task to build a massive template and have it fully set up. It's also quite difficult to assess just how well your template is performing until you actually work with it. So my suggestion here is to start with a smaller number of instruments, maybe just pick a few specific libraries and get those all set up as kind of a proof of concept, and then try and write some music with them. Once you've tested your setup, and adjusted any aspects that weren't quite to your liking, you can then go on and expand your template. Assigning MIDI ports to your MIDI tracks. Most of you probably know this clever linking function in Cubase, where you can select several things at once, and then hold down Shift and Alt to edit them all simultaneously. This also applies to assigning MIDI ports for your template. I'll quickly demonstrate what I mean. You can select a bunch of tracks at the same time, then hold down Shift and Alt keys, and click in the MIDI port assignment field in the Inspector tab. The port you select will now be assigned to all of your selected tracks. It's possible to remotely control enabling and disabling channels in VE Pro from Cubase without needing to switch over to your VE Pro window. There are two ways to achieve this. You can either automate the parameter by an automation lane for each instrument, but this can get a little bit cumbersome, and it does introduce a fair bit of extra visual clutter, because you will need a new controller lane for each of the channels in your VE Pro instances. Alternatively, you can program a couple of lemur buttons, or really any other MIDI capable device, to send out two MIDI control change messages to VE Pro. One to disable, and one to enable the selected channel. In VE Pro, you need to set up automation mapping, and get it to listen to these incoming MIDI messages. I'll show you how this is done. Each VE Pro instance has a separate automation mapping setup window. Under Select Source, you need to define the MIDI port and the MIDI channel number of the instrument you want to control. Next, select the number of the MIDI CC message that you're sending out from your MIDI device. I'm going with MIDI CC 125 here because it's at the top of the range and I'm already using 126 and 127 for other functions. Unfortunately, this does take a fair amount of time to set up, because you will need to create a separate entry for each of the instruments with the correct ports and channel numbers. I really hope that VSL will in the future implement an automatic enabling function, something like Wake on MIDI, which would mean that you could leave your entire template disabled, and as you switch to a new track, the channel in VE Pro would get enabled automatically when it detects any kind of incoming MIDI data. To finish the setup, Choose the name of the channel you want to control in the Destination drop-down menu, and then select Disable. You can now disable this VE Pro channel by sending the selected CC message while you have the corresponding MIDI track selected in Cubase. If you now send CC125 with values from 0 to 63, then that will enable the channel in VE Pro, and values higher than 64 will disable the channel. Next, let's talk a little bit about hardware. One question that I get asked a lot is, what kind of specific hardware requirements there are for a multi-computer setup with VE Pro? In a setup like mine, the main computer running Cubase has to be the most powerful one. Just how much power you need though, depends on your exact requirements. If you're running lots of soft synths or use lots of audio processing plugins, then you are going to want to invest in a modern, high-end CPU for your main computer. I run all of my audio processing plugins on the main computer. The reason for this is that adding any additional processing to VE Pro instances will also add extra latency to those instances. 
which introduces a delay when you're trying to play the virtual instrument. This is of course only noticeable while you're composing. Later in the mixing process where you don't need to perform your instrument lines in real time, you could easily add some of the processing in VE Pro if you're running out of resources on your main computer and need to share the workload a bit. Your sample servers running VE Pro do not need to be anywhere near as powerful as your main computer. In fact, choosing a very high spec CPU for your sample server is complete overkill. You will hit bottlenecks elsewhere before maxing out your CPU. Regardless of how powerful your computers are, each sample server has a maximum number of voices it can stream before it chokes. The exact number depends on a number of factors, including drive speed and how efficiently the libraries you are using are scripted. You can expect a decent sample server machine to be capable of streaming something between 1500 and 3000 simultaneous voices. You can find out how many voices your instruments are using if you look at the contact window of each instrument during playback. There's a small voice counter there. Another general rule to follow is that two cheaper sample servers will almost always outperform a single more expensive sample server. Of course this introduces more complexity into your setup, but it is something really worth considering. Now there's a lot of debate online about clock speed versus core count for audio workstations. For VE Pro sample servers, this matters a lot less than for your main DAW computer. You really don't need to have a lot of CPU cores, and while clock speed is a little bit more important, but you can still get really decent results out of slightly older CPUs, even ones that are a couple of generations old. SSD hard drives, however, are very important. They make a big difference to not only the loading times, but also the overall performance of your computers. Bottom line here is that if I was putting together a VE Pro server right now, then I would go with a relatively recent 4-core i7 processor with 64GB of RAM, or maybe 128 if you're using lots of microphone positions or otherwise very RAM-hungry samples. And then I would fill it up with SSD hard drives. A computer with these specs represents, in my opinion, the sweet spot for value for money. In the previous two videos about Lemur, I showed you only a small fraction of what it is capable of. It's an incredibly powerful piece of software, and the possibilities for its uses are numerous. You can control nearly any aspect of Cubase or your virtual instruments with Lemur. For example, you could set up advanced MIDI editing, project navigation, two-dimensional XY pad controllers, quantization settings, transport controls, or almost anything you could think of which could all be controlled by Lemur. If you want to use some of this kind of advanced functionality with Lemur, then you have a few different options. First, you could rely on Lemur projects that are available to download for free. Second, you could build your own custom Lemur project. And third, you could purchase a premium paid product from third-party developers. Paid projects, as you would expect, seem to offer the most in terms of convenience and functionality. The official Line Lemur website has two sections where you can download free Lemur projects. First, there is the Lemur Premium Content section, with a handful of especially impressive projects by some of the most talented Lemur programmers out there. And then there is the separate user library, which contains everything from full-blown solutions to small and random bits and pieces. All of these projects have been developed and uploaded by Lemur users, and they are all free to download. Some of them have a very specific focus on certain DAWs, while other projects focus more on controlling the MIDI parameters of hardware and software MIDI instruments. There's also a number of projects available that are suitable for live performance and for DJs. In any case, the Lemur user library is really worth it looking into, and I'll leave a link to it below so you can check it out. The second option, if you decide to go down the road of building your own custom project from scratch, then fair warning, the official user manual of Lima could be a bit more thorough in some areas. You should be prepared for quite a steep learning curve, unless you already have some previous experience with coding. If you get stuck somewhere though, then luckily the official Line Lima forums have a lot of useful information, and there are also some very talented and knowledgeable people willing to help you out with specific questions. And the third option is to purchase a third-party premium Lima project. Some of the most impressive paid Lima products come from a developer called MIDI Kinetics. They offer a couple of different solutions for controlling your virtual instruments and for controlling your DAW. Perhaps the most interesting offering is called Composer Tools Pro. It has an advanced graphic interface that allows you to program all of your presets for your virtual instruments right on your tablet without needing to use Lima Editor. 
So this is a great option if you don't want to work with the code in Lemur. You can create thousands of these presets for all of your instruments, and those presets can then be set to activate when you switch to the corresponding track in Cubase. I've learned that they use a kind of similar method for this to the one that I demonstrated in my previous video, using MIDI transformers on each track in Cubase to identify them, but their approach is a bit more streamlined than mine, using only one transformer per track. For each of your instrument presets, you can then set up different faders, buttons, and all sorts of custom controls to transmit custom MIDI data. Another particularly useful time-saving feature is that they have a standalone expression map converter program. You can use this program to import articulation names from your Cubase expression maps, or you can do the reverse and create expression maps based on the articulation names in the presets that you have programmed in Composer Tools Pro. The functionality of Composer Tools Pro actually goes much deeper than this, but you can find out all of the exact details on the official MIDI Kinetics website. I'll leave a link to it below. Another developer that I've seen put out some advanced projects for Lemur is Arts Unmuted. I used some of their products a long time ago, before I started building my own custom Lemur template some three years ago. Since then, Arts Unmuted seems to have stopped actively developing for Lemur, even though they are still selling their older products on their website. I think that some of these older products are still worth checking out, as there's a lot of powerful functionality in there. But be aware that these products have not been updated now for quite a while, and it seems like all further development efforts are now going towards the spiritual successor of one of their most interesting Lima projects, called Metagrid. Which brings us to the final topic of this video. I'll look at a couple of alternative or additional solutions to Lima that you can run on a tablet or a touchscreen. The new Metagrid by Arts Unmuted is now its own iOS app, so it no longer requires Lima to run. It also seems to be a pretty significant upgrade on the previous version. With Metagrid, you can control many different aspects of Cubase. You can design your own custom controller with lots of different buttons and with custom icons, and then link those buttons to trigger almost any function in Cubase. Like for example, project navigation, transport controls, or you could trigger project logical editor presets or edit MIDI data. There's a lot of cool functionality. I'll leave a link to the Metagrid app below. Another interesting solution is called Cubase Power User, developed by 14-bit MIDI. This is actually a VST plugin, so you run it straight inside Cubase without any third-party software involved. It also offers access to nearly any function that Cubase has to offer, via a custom interface that you can design to your own liking. Cubase Power User is designed to work really well with a large touchscreen, but you can alternatively just have it as a separate window, maybe on a second computer screen, and simply control it with your mouse. Again, I'll leave a link below where you can read more about it and see how it functions. One more option to consider is Touch OSC. Touch OSC is software that's kind of similar to Lemur. You can use it to design your own custom MIDI controller from scratch and set it up in various ways to control your MIDI instruments. There are some great YouTube videos out there showing Touch OSC in action. I personally really like the videos made by German composer Dirk Ehlert. I'm really sorry if I just butchered the pronunciation of your name, Dirk. But anyway, do check out his videos. I'll leave a link to one of those below, and I'll also leave a link to the official website of Touch OSC. In general, Touch OSC is easier to learn to use than Lemur, although ultimately it's not quite as powerful or flexible. These are some of the more popular products that I've seen various composers use to enhance their workflow and to incorporate a tablet or touchscreen into their setup. If you happen to know of any other great Lima projects or other third-party solutions that help working with large templates and lots of virtual instruments, then I'd really appreciate it if you could share this information and leave a link in the comments section below. And that's it for the template tutorial series. I hope that these videos have been helpful and that some of the concepts and approaches I have demonstrated or suggested can help you find your own ideal setup and lead to enhanced workflow for composing music with virtual instruments. If you have any further questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below and I shall try to answer them. Next I'll be starting a series of videos covering some music production tips and tricks. I'll talk about mixing, EQs, compression, reverbs, MIDI programming tips to get the most out of your sampled instruments, and lots more. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.